Right. Hello, everyone. I don't know if I'm live yet. So if you guys can um, give me a sign by commenting. Uh, today we are online on Facebook, uh, YouTube and LinkedIn. So uh, give me a shout out. Uh, for now, I see zero. So if anybody can write down uh, where they're tuning in from. Hi, Francis. <laughs> I think you're the first one. Um, yeah, so today is our second uh, live. Hello, Antonio. Um, and we are going to start very soon. Um, we have over 200 people that said they would join So on, on the three platforms. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, and this time we're going to talk about uh, how to digitize your business development and find clients online. Um, and this uh, recording is going to be published uh, again uh, tomorrow morning uh, in one of my posts, but it's also going to be live on the podcast of the IBD Hub. Um, so uh, I will give you all the uh, addresses at the end of this if you want to share it or uh, listen to it again it will be possible um, so I see some people from Dubai from the UK Essex uh, Louise we have Rashik um, please do not hesitate to uh, you know uh, write comments and ask questions throughout um, I still see that there is zero people connected, but obviously the system must be wrong. <laughs> I hope at least. Um, so today, um, I'm first gonna introduce the IBD Hub again for the people that haven't, uh, that don't know it yet. So uh, the IBD Hub um, was built uh, recently um, and it's a, a company that aims to help architects and engineers to grow their business and find new projects. Um, and we do that for people that want to start their own practice uh, or companies that um, have been uh, uh, struggling with finding new projects and enter new markets. But today we are going to talk about how to digitize your business uh, development and how to find uh, online um, clients uh, and projects. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about uh, for about half an hour. I think I will take some questions at the end. So please keep them for uh, that moment. Um, so the first um, thing that I would like to to explain is why business development is so important. So business development um, is the backbone of your business. So if you start an engineering or architecture practice, um, you will have to have a strategy to find new clients and new projects. You can't possibly think, okay, I'm gonna start my practice to do very nice projects and I'm very good at designing. That's just simply not enough uh, anymore. You also need to have business skills, uh, have a strategy to find new clients constantly and new projects. So that's extremely important. Um, so business development is basically the strategy that you put in place in order to reach out to potential clients and potential leads. And that is then going to trigger an opportunity for a project. So it works differently, whether it's for public uh, projects or private projects. So public projects are the client is, of course, the government or the municipality or any entity that is funding publicly the project. Um, and that strategy is usually a bit indirect because you cannot directly target the clients there, but you need to be present and you need to be known by the decision makers of these uh, institutions. Um, for the private 
uh, business development. So in order to get projects with private clients, um, which can be developers, it can be um, one-to-one clients that want to build their house and so on. The, the strategy for this is more direct. You're going to try to trigger meetings directly with them and pitch. So it's very important in a way to have a strategy according to which what kind of projects you're trying to target, if that makes sense. Um, and we will talk about this uh, in the next few weeks as well. I will do a session about the difference between public uh, and private business development, which is really important. Um, but okay, but basically, um, you have to have a strategy to target the right clients, find them, and uh, do it in parallel to your projects. So, a lot of people, and you can see it now, especially with Corona. Um, so, unfortunately, with Corona, we we were used to meet potential clients and leads through events so the MIPIM uh, in Nice or the CIMI in Paris or um, you know networking events where you actually make contact with developers and potential clients so these events are not there anymore so how do you reach out to people um, and try to still get projects uh, online that's what we're gonna discuss but also the other issue has been that many companies didn't do their business development in parallel to their projects so they got their project and they were working on it uh, up until corona and then it was paused but they didn't invest in a business development strategy in the in the same time as doing their projects so that caused them a lot of issues because now they're a little bit stuck um, so that's why it's so important to always have it in parallel constantly. Um, so invest in your business development since the beginning and never stop, even if you're busy. Uh, if you're a startup, if you get your first project, do at least one or two hours of business development per day. <laughs> and I insist on that so that uh, uh, you are sure to trigger um, some opportunities down the line. Otherwise, it doesn't work. It's not self-sufficient. Um, the next point was, how can you acquire new projects and clients online? So that will be um, a little bit what I'm going to talk about as a core to this um, live today. Um, so one of the biggest mistakes that architects make, um, unfortunately, and engineers, I have to say, they, they also do it, is the fact that um, on social media and online, um, we tend to showcase our references as opposed to our expertise. So there are a lot of projects that are posted. Um, like, sorry, my dog is playing with a chew toy, which is probably not the right moment. Um, but um, we tend to showcase how references, how projects um, renders uh, without really explaining the project or her expertise or even the values of the company. So that's um, something that is not right. This is not what is going to... Um, show the client what is your added value. So the client sees everyone posting references of towers, of uh, residential um, projects and so on. But how can they know, okay, I prefer this architect rather than this one, right? So that's why instead of showcasing directly your references, you have to place yourself as more of an expert. So I'm going to give the example of LinkedIn. For instance, on LinkedIn, uh, you want to post and to write articles about um, topics that you really care about and reflect your values as a company. Um, so it can be about sustainability, how sustainability is going to be more and more important uh, now that there is COVID and uh, how 
can architects reflect on sustainability for a living uh, and so on? You have to give your opinion. You have to show that you are the expert um, in that specific field and explain how you would see the solutions to this problem that the client may have. Um, this is for sure the way that you want to position yourself, whether it's on your personal profile on LinkedIn or on your company um, LinkedIn or Instagram or, or whichever. So you really want to show off your expertise and not just your project. So even if you post um, a project, a reference, try to target an issue that you have solved and put pictures of the project that show how you solved the issue so that people remember the story about the project and they don't see a pretty picture that they will scroll through. So that's extremely important. And also on LinkedIn, if you're a management uh, person or the owner of a company, you need to showcase your values, uh, uh, your added value as, a, as an architect or as an engineering company and why people should work with you rather than others, right? So that is something that is really misunderstood when it comes to um, marketing and social media. And usually when you showcase your values and your expertise, um, straight away you get attention through LinkedIn or through Instagram um, for projects. So your profile is extremely important. Um, the company page uh, on LinkedIn or Instagram, on top of showing your expertise and why you, sh you, you are the best person to do the job, it also needs to be some kind of, um, of brand. So people need to come to your, to your page and see a community there. Um, if you specialize in Feng Shui, for instance, you want people to uh, go on your company page and feel the atmosphere uh, of calmness. Um, you really want to showcase your values and so on. So that is very important. And, and this branding and uh, positioning as an expert will then help you with the second point that I'm gonna make in a second. Um, so a lot of people also ask me which platforms are more useful. So LinkedIn and Instagram are probably the top two uh, platforms that I would recommend. Uh, LinkedIn because it connects you directly to potential clients and um, partners such as uh, um, engineers that can be in your design team or co-architects that can work with you on other projects. And Instagram is quite good, especially for interior designers or um, architecture companies that are looking for private projects because um, a lot of private clients are on Instagram and are looking for inspiration there as well. So these are a little bit the platforms that I would recommend. I know that some people are using Pinterest, um, but what are you guys using? Can you comment a little bit to tell me how you guys are using it? If there is more people on LinkedIn or on Instagram, I'm curious. And so once you have the branding, um, of your page and your personal uh, page, then you can start doing lead generation. Um, what is lead generation? Lead generation is really the ability to find clients, but also partners. And I'm gonna explain the, the difference. Partners are people that you have worked with previously or people that could be part of your design team. So if you're an architect, that, those will be engineers. If you're an engineer, those will be architects or other specialized engineer uh, services that you don't have. So 
how do you get there? Um, luckily, you can um, go on LinkedIn and search for um, development uh, companies, which are really important if you're doing private project. So if you have the LinkedIn Pro, actually, you get a sales navigator, uh, which is a separate page uh, where you can really uh, figure filter out develop developers or um, architecture companies or engineering companies and then uh, through there you can see who is the decision maker uh, so the bd person or the manager of the company and you can directly uh, contact them uh, by email, so by LinkedIn email. So that is really a really um, effective way to get there. Um, but I'm also a very big, um, uh, like I, I really believe that it's important to make lists of people uh, that you are interested in. So uh, people who work with me at the moment, uh, <laughs> and some of them are online right now, but uh, they have to, um, as part of the coaching, make lists of engineers, um, architects and developers that have matching values with the, their company. Um, from that, uh, so it's an Excel sheet, right? Um, so you put the name of all the companies that you would like to meet, you go on their website and you search exactly which person of that company you would like to get in contact with. And then you search that person on LinkedIn or uh, you can phone the phone company and ask for the email of that person that also works really well. Once you have um, the contact that you want, the person that you want to meet, you need to write an email that basically will trigger a meeting where you can pitch. So at the moment, of course, it would be a meeting through Zoom. Um, otherwise, you would meet face to face, of course. Uh, but it's really important to write an email that is short. Don't write about your life, your experience, your CV, uh, your website. No, try to be more, position yourself in a powerful, um kind of status right so you're contacting them and um you can say listen i saw that you shared uh this article on linkedin and i see that we are uh sharing uh, a lot of uh values in common whether it's sustainability whether it's a project that you really like and so on and tell them like it would be really nice to have a zoom call uh, to see if we can potentially collaborate in the future. And, and this short message triggers them to want to know more. If you already tell them exactly what they want to hear, um, they are more likely to dismiss you straight away. Um, but you can only win uh, a collaboration or a project if you meet the person face-to-face uh, -face or on a Zoom call is much easier than to pitch, than to pitch on an email. So try to keep it short and try to trigger interest. Um, try to show that you have researched some of their articles or some of the things that interest them and that will trigger them to reply to you. So try to do that in order to trigger the meeting. Once you get the meeting, of course, then is the time to pitch, right? Um, and this pitch, uh, you can go back to one of our uh, IBD Hub episode with Bogdan that we did about pitching. Um, and there we explain exactly that the, the pitching is not about showcasing your portfolio. Pitching is about asking questions um, to the client or to... Uh, the person that is in front of you uh, and ask what their actual problem is in order to then um, pitch back saying why you would be the best person for the job and how you could solve his problem. 
in a very unique way. Um, so once you pitch, usually it's, you know, it, it should be adapted to what the issue of the, of the client is, or even if it's a partner um, that you want to work with, try to pitch according to their values. Like, okay, why, who have you worked with before as an architect? Um, how did that go? He, he will maybe say like, okay, my experience with the architects that we have in general is terrible because during the process, they don't let us do our job and so on, you know, try to ask them like, what was the problem, you know, so that you can go back in and say, oh, well, we do it like this, you know, like and reassure him that you're the best person to do that. Does that make sense to be, to everyone? Um, so that's for the meeting. Um, and then, of course, after that, there is the follow up, right? Because you don't necessarily have a project to give straight away. So following up, and we don't do that enough, um, is to write an email uh, following the meeting uh, to, you know, just check in and send them the portfolio, um, maybe write more uh, about your company then, or maybe just simply ask them to send you some details about a specific project if there is one, uh, and then give them uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, send you the details so you can give your opinion about it. Um, one of my coaches the other day asked me a question um, saying, okay, once I pitch to the client and he has a project, um, then I end up doing a lot of work for free. And then in the end, once he has his preliminary design, then he just disappears, right? So how much is too much, right? Um, I, what I say usually is that you never want to give too much, but just tease them enough, right? So if uh, they can send you the details about the project, then you can explain, okay, I've had a look at it and this is um, the options or you can make a, a a feasibility study, let's say, but not a preliminary design. So what I mean about feasibility is just volumes or uh, an analysis of the meter squares or maybe the program that can be fit in, but definitely not a design for free. Otherwise you will lose the negotiation because once you do uh, um, a preliminary design for free for private clients, uh, be sure that you don't have any um, negotiation uh, uh, perspective. So he will have power and you will not be able to say anything about the price or anything because you already gave your knowledge. So let's try to tease them. Like it's about business. It's not, it's, it's not just about architecture. Like you are a great designer for sure, right? Like we all know that, but you still need to tease them. Like it, it's, it's about business. If someone was giving you, uh, I don't know, was selling you um, a course online, but was giving you half of it, you would not buy it in the end because you would already know what the course is about, right? Like, so let's try to do business as architects and engineers and not just, you know, dream about design all the time. Like, I know I'm harsh, but like, it's also for your own good, like learning business is part of the journey. So you can make beautiful projects, but at the end of the day, the biggest companies in the world are also the ones that can put themselves in a good position to negotiate and um, have relationship with clients and partners. So that's really important. Um, so to conclude, <laughs> for this, um, um, how can you acquire client and project online? Try to uh, be more present uh, on LinkedIn, especially on LinkedIn. Right now, so many people are 
uh, on the lockdown and behind their computers the whole day for uh, their work. Everyone is connected to LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the platform that has made uh, uh, the most connection since Corona. Um, people are doing business on there. So you need to be out there. You need to be posting every day. If you have to, uh, you have to add people as friends. Um, so you can search uh, developers or development companies and then add people from the management uh, or, or business development team. Try to be visible, really. It's, this is the right time. Uh, to beat the competition uh, because the big uh, giants of architect architecture companies and engineering com uh, companies are too busy focusing on projects that they have ongoing. Um, others are trying to, to you know, solve some issues due to some projects that are on hold. So a lot are um, not really focusing on getting project now but if you trust me if you invest in yourself and your company right now um to you know uh do your, your business development get some connection through there trigger some zoom meetings uh, people are open to it and the reason why there is a little there's going to be a little bit of a an issue on, in the architecture and engineering field right now is that people didn't get a chance to meet and discuss new projects and discuss new investments. So if we can replace that and do it online, um, we're gonna avoid a crisis in our field. So go out there. I know like for me also like uh, before Corona, I never thought I would be in front of a camera, you know, or like, posting every day or I never thought that I'm, I'm you know uh, quite shy about this but now it's better you learn through doing right um, but really get out there so this is uh, my conclusion I'm gonna take some questions um, but I think that my system is a little bit slower than um, the questions that I get so if you can write me the questions right now and in the meantime, I'm gonna explain you um, what I am launching today. So today, in order to help architects and engineers to um, really do their business development uh, online, we have launched a six weeks uh, course online on digital business development. You can take a screenshot of this link and then later go through our website and find it. It's a six week course. We take only 50 people and it starts on the 26th of this month for six weeks. Um, and we have prepared this course um, during the lockdown. Uh, we didn't share it yet with anyone um, and we did it in collaboration with Amin Siala, who is the business development um, representative for Google. So it's a very good course. It explains step by step what you should do in order to be visible online and how to trigger uh, meetings with potential and partners um, and really, you know, boost your company growth to another level. So if you feel like you need more input on uh, how to digitize your business development, we take only 50 people and we are launching right now. <laughs> so um, it's going to go fast. So visit her website for this. Um, also, this episode will be uh, posted again tomorrow morning on LinkedIn and also will be available on her podcast, the IBD Hub, um, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. Um, and now I have a question from Lydia. Do you recommend this also for interior designer? Yes, definitely. Um, I think interior designers in particular um, we'll need to, uh, for sure, uh, use uh, tools like 
Instagram and uh, Facebook ads in order to uh, trigger people to buy. I think it's even more interesting for interior design um, than, than for uh, uh, engineers, for instance. Uh, interior design, uh, everything is going to be online. Like it's going to be hard to find clients face to face. So for sure, I would recommend it. Um, who else has a question? Otherwise, I'm going to stop here. Yeah, it, on my live, it still says only zero people are watching. So it's really, it's really, um, in a way, it's better for stress, right? Like I see zero people, so I feel like I'm talking to myself. Perfect. Um, but anyway, uh, joke aside, uh, if um, the online course is not for you, I just wanted to wrap up and conclude. Um, we have also uh, coaching packages uh, for starters and professionals. So these are for people that want to start their architecture or engineering practice or interior design, as Lydia says. Um, and you get private coaching with me and uh, we try to push forward your business in terms of concept and also in terms of how to get clients um, straight away and trigger opportunities. So you can also find that on her website. Um, and then we also do consultations, of course, um, consultations with architecture and engineering companies that are already existent and that need a new business development strategy, whether it's online or offline. So if you, um, want to do that, please vi visit our website for both coaching and consulting. We do, um, a, um, first session for free so that you at least get to introduce yourself and uh, we can uh, tell you what is best in order to uh, guide you uh, to, to, to your goal, right? Um, Andrew has one last question. Do you believe this works for international projects? Uh, definitely. <laughs> so um, actually, us as a background, the IBD company um, originally is a business development company uh, that helps architects and engineers to find projects abroad. So this uh, course has been um, tailored to the strategy that we usually use for uh, architects and engineers who want to grow internationally. So definitely uh, it's a good... Um, it's a good question and uh yes most definitely international project uh it will work uh i have no no doubt about that one so so thank you um everyone for being here um i hope to see you next week as well i don't know yet about which topic we're going to talk about but i think that we might have a guest surprise guest next week so uh, I'll keep you posted on that so thank you so much and see you very soon